Hello everybody, welcome to He Who Moans. What are you talking about? I always do this on camera. Sharp! Anyway, so a little while ago I made my top 10 best and worst classic Doctor Who serials videos and I've been meaning to talk about my pick for the worst one, a little notorious one called Warriors of the Deep, for some time now. And since it's a special occasion, I decided to have a guest on. Oh my god, it's like it's a proper YouTube channel and everything. Here from Council of Geeks, it's Nathaniel Wayne! <laughs> Uh, thank you. Thank you. Hey, hey, there. So, how are you doing, Nathaniel? Kind of wondering what real me has been up to. Uh, well, since we last collaborated, your YouTube channel has... Oh, it's past 20,000 subscribers. Great, so he's doing better than I was. And was that really you that I collaborated with? Was that Avatar Stewart? I'm still iffy on how all this works. We really don't have time to get into the rules here. Don't mean to harp on it, it's just still kind of weird for me. I miss having fingers. I could draw you some if you want. Hang on. I... uh... Um, I can't bend these. Yeah, jo joints are hard and I can't... animating it, it's just... J just put up with that, alright? Just forget it. So, this was your first time watching Warriors of the Deep, as I recall. Yes, and I don't feel you gave me proper warning ahead of time. I did tell you it was notorious. Yeah, well, so is Twin Dilemma, and that wasn't nearly as bad as everyone says it is. Whoa, 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 you're not about to defend the Twin Dilemma on my channel, are you? Because I can banish you to the inky void with a keystroke here. I didn't say it was good, just not the monstrosity that I was promised. This... On the other hand, I would have liked to have been prepared for what I just saw. Okay, but how does one prepare for viewing something like this? A couple of shots of Jägermeister for starters. Oh, here you go. These look like upside down gumdrops. Okay, just drink and let's get on with this. Okay. So, the setup is a pretty standard base under siege story set on future Earth. We've got the Silurians teaming up with the Sea Devils to take over an undersea base so that they can use the weapons housed there to instigate a conflict on the surface where warring factions of humanity will wipe each other out and they can take back the surface. Firstly, I can't help but feel like the meeting of the Silurians and the Sea Devils should have felt a little bit more momentous. Not only that, but this is a pretty cool idea on its own. It's clear they wanted to play about with the Cold War political environment of the era, where you got different sides fighting proxy wars for shared goals. The old show did have a long history of sci-fi satire, so it kind of makes sense in theory, but in execution, it basically consists of characters flatly saying vaguely political sounding stuff to one another while men in rubber fish suits release a big monster. The satire element is about as blunt and unsophisticated as you can get, and even if you did try and take it seriously, it's incredibly hard to, because... look at it. Oh dear. What is it? The Merka. They also clearly gave up trying to animate the Silurians' mouths, and just gave them the Dalek-style light on their heads that flashes when they speak. And that's how you can tell which one of them's talking. Okay, so it looks terrible, but if we shove that to one side for a minute, the script is still a bit of a mess. Episode 1 in particular, I would call the single most pointless episode in Doctor Who history. Almost nothing happens for 25 minutes except, Doctor shows up in place! There are monsters in that place! To fulfil what this episode's trying to achieve, it could have been done and dusted in about 10 minutes, but in order to drag it out to meet the 25 minute mark, everyone just says their lines really, really slowly to make the episode longer. Bridge. Nielsen here. We have a problem with Maddox. I think you should come down, Commander. Right. Maddox will have a total mental collapse unless treated. It's like everyone smoked a massive joint before filming. Well, th there is one moment that feels a little bit rushed, and that's Turlo's reaction to the Doctor falling into the water. So Tegan gets ready to try and retrieve him, but Turlo stops her and says, Face it, Tegan! He's drowned! I actually backed this bit up, and I counted it out. The Doctor has been in the water for all of 
10 seconds when Turlo makes this declaration. Not dead man floating for 10 seconds, just in the water, period. 10 seconds. And apparently he's a lost cause and will cliffhanger on that moment so that audiences can have a full week to ruminate on how stupid that is. I mean, if you're on a budget as low as this, maybe it's not such a good idea to have a script that's filled with action sequences. Episodes 2 and 3 consist of pretty much nothing but action sequences, and then there's a few throwaway talky bits with the Doctor in episode 4. Hey everyone, let's try making Star Wars in a series of rooms in a couple of weeks on a millionth of the budget. What could possibly go wrong? The Star Wars comparison becomes painfully apt when they try and recreate that classic opening of the original film where the rebels and the stormtroopers take each other on in the hallway. Except here nobody is taking cover, so you just have slow moving sea devils marching down an open hallway, slowly shooting at human guards who aren't in cover, and somehow half these shots are missing. There's none of the panicked sudden energy that a scene like this needs in order to work. Probably because they didn't have the time or money to figure out how to do it any better. And here's the thing. None of this was necessary to make the core idea of Warriors of the Deep work. You can make a compelling drama on a low budget. Like, the entire point of the Silurians is the political angle, and yet that's criminally ignored in favour of the overambitious action sequences, which look totally ridiculous. Now, do you mind if we just drop the pretense and list some of the most absurd stuff that is put up on the screen? Yeah, sure, why not? This lieutenant who looks like he stole Michael Jackson's costume from the Thriller video. The worst looking electrocution death acting yet committed to film. The Doctor sneaking away from the Silurian leader and numerous guards by just backing slowly out of a door. This woman trying to karate kick a sea monster. And while we're at it, let's just throw the marker back up there for a bit, because... Look at it. But like you said, it's not just the execution. There are serious writing lapses in this. The one that really made my brain stop dead in its tracks was when the humans found the TARDIS. And it wasn't even locked. And insultingly... That didn't even have a major impact on the story. Duplicitous humans just stroll into the TARDIS, and it doesn't even mean anything. That one does get lost in the shuffle of everything else going on. But yeah, normally, when someone gets into the TARDIS, that's supposed to demonstrate a skill that they have that makes them impressive or dangerous. Here, it just sort of happens because... Eh, fuck it, why not? And is it just me, or is the Doctor oddly trigger-happy? Really? Because he's mostly trying to talk the Silurians down, as I recall. Yeah, sometimes, but he kills the Merkin, or whatever it is, with basically a light cannon, uses that same cannon on a human, and is an active participant in killing the Silurians by gas. That last one, especially, sticks with me, because it feels like the kind of thing the Doctor would refuse to do, but maybe either one of his companions or somebody else on the base does it anyway when the Doctor goes to try and reason with the Silurian leader. Yeah, sure, he objects for like a hot second, but having the Doctor himself actively decide to do this feels really wrong somehow. I mean, I, I don't know, maybe it's me? I'm also not that far out from watching Arc of Infinity where this same Doctor shoots Omega dead, so maybe I'm just noticing it more? Ultimately, the reason that I find Warriors so interesting isn't really to do with anything that happens in it. On the British Light Entertainment Show, Room 101, which, for those unfamiliar, is a show where celebrities will pick and talk about things they hate and have them banished to Room 101, one episode they had Michael Grade on. Michael Grade was made controller of BBC One in 1984, and he was always harping on at Doctor Who about its low production values, and his example was the Merca. While classic Doctor Who's downfall was owing to quite a lot of factors, it's generally agreed that Michael Grade's dislike of the show was one of the bigger ones. And it's why I can legitimately say that the Doctor's greatest foe isn't the Daleks or the Cybermen or the Master. It's the Merker, because it's essentially what got the show cancelled. Now really, that was an infuriating thing to realize. That'd be like cancelling Buffy the Vampire Slayer because of Beer Bad, or Batman the Animated Series because of that one episode where two kids defeated the Penguin, or that time the Penguin fell in love, or... Actually, come to think of it, the Penguin episodes really weren't good on that show. 
Pell, it's such a shambles, I'd go as far as to say that Warriors of the Deep arguably isn't even a Doctor Who serial at all. Maggie Thatcher had just announced an election and the BBC needed the studio space to cover it, and the production lost two weeks as a result. Many scenes went unrehearsed and takes with fluffed lines ended up in the final product. The Merka costume was only finished about an hour before it was scheduled to be used, the operators had no time to rehearse inside it and the paint hadn't finished drying and smelt of adhesives inside. This is not a professional working environment. All in all, it was dreadful, but hey, at least the camera was usually in focus. Put that quote on a poster. So, what happens now? Do I get to go back to my channel? My 20,000 subs? Um, no, I think I'm going to be keeping those, I'm afraid. And wait. You? Yes, Nathaniel. Everything is going according to plan. Ha 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 